Hey guys, it's Eric with Midgard Arms. So today I want to go over one of my favorite thing and that's obscurity. So I'm going to tell you guys what I think is the best cartridges that hunters have forgot about over the years. Okay. So I'm going to kind of, kind of do this in uh, just a kind of listing fashion, tell you guys what I think of it and everything else. If you guys have any questions, comments, you have a favorite one that I didn't list, put it in the comments. Um, put it down there tell me you know I, I i'll give you my opinion these are just the ones that i think that are obscure enough yet people would probably know what they are if they heard it but are still viable very viable transitional calibers for young shooters even experienced people and everything else all, all through the gambit here so the first one is one of my personal favorites is going to be a six millimeter remington it was uh, introduced in 1955 as the 244 remington uh, they came out originally with a 1 in 12 twist barrel. They geared it toward a long range varmint, fast varmint shooting rifle. And then uh, a few years later in the 60s, they decided to say, hey, you know what? A lot of people want to use this for bigger game too, so we're going to rebrand it, re it, excuse me, rebrand it, rename it, call it 6mm Remington, put it with a 1 in 9 twist barrel, set it out there. Uh, it, it's best suited for hand loads. 243 performs almost identical. You have maybe 100 feet per second difference when it comes to on paper performance. But with the bu bullets that are out nowadays, especially the slow burning powders that we have, and, and the way that you can set the bullet from a 6 millimeter Remington a little bit further into the lands of your rifle, it, it, you can really get some good performance out of it. Still excellent. I have one myself, and I have a 243, and that's that rifle you sit back there is my, two, my son's 243. Uh, next one. Uh, kind of in the same fa family as the 257 Roberts. <clears throat> 257 Roberts, otherwise known as the Bob or the 257 Bob, uh, came out in the 1920s by Ned Roberts. He came up with that. He wildcatted it off the parent cartridge of a 7x57 Mauser. Uh, and at the time, so 6mm Remington came out in 1955. In the 1920s, when they came out 257 Roberts, at the time, it was the easiest shooting transitional rifle that a young shooter or anybody who just wants an all-around gun that can go from uh, lightweight shooting at varmints to I can take it out to the deer field, drop a whitetail with it. And I mean, I, I would not be surprised if there's if there's just as many deer that were dropped over the history of time as like a 30 out six. I mean, it was that popular at one one time. Um, for the 257 Roberts, uh, just to give you more on that uh, transitional stuff, you can shoot a 75 grain load, uh, goes at 3,400 feet a second. That's pretty impressive. Uh, you, and you can shoot up to 117 grain at 2,800 feet a second. That's that's just underneath the 25 out six. And then the next one I have to say is the parent case of both those two, the six millimeter and the 257 Roberts, is a seven by 57 Mauser, developed in 1892. Okay, by Paul Mauser himself, the, the person who developed the Mauser company, makes Mauser 98, everything. The person who coined all that stuff came up with this cartridge. And it was adopted the world over by a lot of your Spanish-speaking countries and everything else as the standard military round. 7x57, you, you'll find them in the Chilean Mausers, Spanish Mausers. I mean, if you go to an old gun shop that has any old Mausers, look at, look at one if it says 7mm Mauser on it. Um, it, it it's, comes from one of those Spanish-speaking countries, and they are attack-driving guns. They are really good quality guns, and the round is no slouch. Um, so early in the in the early years of the 1900s, a person by the name of John Rigby decided to take the Mauser 98 action and the Spanish Mauser actions and make sporting rifles out of those. Um, he coined it because it was nobody wanted to say, oh, it's just a military gun, blah, 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 blah. He coined it as a 7mm uh, Rigby or the 275 Rigby. Okay, so if you see older guns and stuff, um, they, you, you could see something like that where, where it has the connotation of being a 7mm Rigby or a 275 Rigby. Um, those guys, no slouch either. You can shoot 123 grain going about 2,900 feet a second and 173 grain going about 2,300 feet a second. So it's a little slow when you start throwing in them heavy 7 millimeter bullets, but for a good ballistic coefficient rifle with very light recoil, it is excellent. Um, and then uh, one of the big proponents of the 270 Winchester has always been, um, oh man, I just lost his name. Uh, Jack O'Connor. Jack O'Connor was a 
probably the biggest proponent of the 270 Winchester. He killed every big game animal in the United States with a 130 grain partition in a 270. His wife was an avid hunter as well, and her preferred caliber of choice was a 7x57 Mauser. Excellent. Um, and, and while to stay on the 7x57 Mauser, with, with the advent of all the rifles that it came out, a lot of them ended up in Africa. And it is, our, it is documented that there has been 800 elephants 800 elephants killed by the 7x57 Mauser. So, I mean, very, I mean, a lot of people use some big old honking things as big as your thumb to go after that stuff. And I mean, 7x57 Mauser, 800 elephants, it can easily take down an elk. All right. So the next one, one of my personal favorites, I don't have one yet, I want to build one, is the 6x, 6 by 6.5x55 by Swede, or the Swedish Mauser. Came out in 1891, so the the uh, year before the 7 by 57 Mauser was invented by Paul Mauser, the Swedes came out with the 6.5 by 55, and everybody knows 6.5. You got high BCs, good sectional density, and overall great performers for any kind of long range or anything like that. Okay, so it served the Swedish military from 1894 to 1995. Mm -hmm. That, that's 101 years. I mean, it's just like our 30-06. So the 6.5 is just like our 30-06, where it's it, it's it's gone 100 and... I mean, heck, it, it's the military service of the 30-06 wasn't 100 years, but you know what? Sportsmen really keep that one alive. So, I mean, that's just a testament to the 6.5 Swede, 101 years to serve the military. And it's still it's still pretty popular. You can find howas chambered in it. A lot of custom guns you'll find up, uh, out there are chambered in it. Um... For time-tested performance when it comes to long-range matches, comes to just shooting that 6.5 bullet. If you talk to any old-timer out there on, hey, what's a good 6.5 to, to get, you know, don't be surprised if they say 6.5 sweet or 6.5 by 55. You have excellent case capacity, good long neck, and it's just an overall performer. Okay. So and then staying in this uh, 6.5 millimeter, we're going to go to 260 Remington. Based on the 308, it came out in 1997. It was originally a Wildcat called the 6.508 A square. Okay, so it was standardized in 1997 by Remington. Based on the 308, so if you want something that hey, I can find brass anywhere, I can do this, I can do that, instead of having to buy your 6.5 by 55 brass, which can get expensive. Or, you know, nobody really stocks it anymore. It's not as popular as it once was. You can resize 243, 7mm 08, 308. You can just resize it all for that 260 Remington. Ident identically ballistic, uh, excuse me, ballistically identical to the 6.5 Swede. Um, 260 does run a shorter action. You, do, you need a moderate action for the Swede. Um, but it, it's still performance-wise identical to the Swede. Uh, you can go 120 grain in the 260 at 2,900 feet a second, up to 140 grain at 2,750. No slouch at all. Excellent performer. And all the guys that are all over 6.5 Creedmoor nuts right now, it's been around forever, guys. I'll, I'll get to the 6.5 Creedmoor, don't worry. Okay, so jumping up, back to the 7 millimeters now. I'm talking about the 280 Remington. Man, 280 Remington. If you want a 7 mag but you don't like to recoil that sucker, get a 280 Remington. You can kill everything in North America, South America, Africa. I mean, it's a 7x57 Mausers dropping 800 elephants. You can take anything you want with a 280 Remington. Very, very good. You don't see them hardly chambered anymore. I think it was Nosler or some, somebody, one of them high-end, uh, pretty much gun, custom gun manufacturers came out with the standard caliber of the 280 Ackley. Man, because it is such a tri tri tried and true, tested bullet. And I mean, everybody forgets about it. Everybody forgets about it. it says, no, well, if you want a 7mm, you need to go 7mm 08 or 7mm rib mag. 280, right in there, based off the 30 out 6 action. Came out in 1957, uh, originally as a 7mm Express. But essentially, it's a 7 mag without your shoulder hurting. You know, you can, you can take every bullet, everything, and you're going to be pushing those things from 3,100 feet a second with 120 grain all the way up to 2,680 with 175 grain. No slouch at all, guys. 
you can resize brass if you're reloading. You can reload 30, uh, 30 brass. You can up size up 270 brass. I mean, it's out there. Do not be afraid to get a 280 Remington. Excellent, excellent cartridge. And one of my personal favorites, and another one that I would like to get here soon, is a 264 Win Mag. A lot of guys, a lot of guys think. Uh, there's not too much when it comes to 6.5 Magnum. You know, you got your 6.5 PRCs now. Everybody forgets about this 264 Win Mag. It came out 1959. Okay, it is the classic overbore Magnum. Okay, so when everybody talks about overbore, that means for the small little bullet you're chunking out of there with that big old piece of powder behind it, you're gonna blow your barrel out. But if you keep your loads a little bit on the lighter side, not try to jack them up to 4,000 feet a second or try to get 3,500 feet a second or whatever out of those guys, you're going to save your barrel just fine, but you can still magnum shoot those 6.5 bullets and everything else. You'll get super long BC uh, stability. One of my personal favorites for taking anything that anybody can use to take any kind of CPX2 game. So big mule deer, uh, big whitetails, anything. If you're shooting the western state and you have dad's old 264 wind mag, sight that sucker in and it is going to work flawless for you. All right. Uh, moving on, 1960, developed by Norma. Who can say where I'm going with this one? Got a couple videos out there for it. Check them out. It's the 308 Norma. 308 Norma Magnum. Essentially, a poor man or a regular man's 300 Win Mag. Performance-wise, it's kind of like shooting a, uh, kind of like shooting the, oh, what was I just talking about? Kind of like, uh. It's kind of like 308 and 30 You're only a couple, maybe 100 feet per second difference of the two. But, I mean, heck, you can take your original Mauser action. That's what it's designed for. Uh, Norma designed it to be made for the Mauser 98 action. You can take that moderate action that those have. They don't have the long action like a Remington and not a short action like a 308 Remington. It is an intermediate action that you can take and shoot a Magnum out of that. No modification. You don't have to op uh, cut the action in half, open it up, put a new piece of bottom metal in there or anything like that you can get magnum performance out of your standard gun uh, and that thing according to uh, norma's load data you can shoot the 180 grain uh, oryx bullets at 2950 180 grain at almost 3000 feet or second again another one of those just like the 264 wind mag and the 280 remington and the 7x57 mauser take anything you want with that it's it's overkill in my book when you start talking about 30 caliber magnums but then again dead is dead you cannot make anything more dead. Uh, very accurate guns. Check out my other videos on my 308 Norma. All right. So another thing that a lot of people forget about, uh, the long range shooters, some of the people who are really inter interested in the shooting stuff probably know what I'm talking about when I say this. Ackley Improved. I mentioned it with the 280. Uh, Ackley Improved. So essentially it is uh, coined by Gunsmith. I think it was in the early 1900s, 1910, 1912, maybe up to 1920, uh, Parker Auto Ackley, P.O. Ackley. Uh, so it is a custom chambering based on a certain parent case. So you can have any case out there, 7x57 Ackley, a 257 Roberts Ackley, 6mm Ackley, anything Ackley, 30 out 6, 30 30, Ackley it out. What it is, you're taking your standard case, which has usually got a decent taper, and usually about a 25 degree shoulder. You're making that taper pretty much straight walled and you're putting a much tighter shoulder on that thing so you can get up to about 10% case capacity more. So that means more case capacity, more powder, everything else. Coolest thing about Ackley that I love, you say, you, say you're shooting uh, like uh, my 25 out 6 Ackley. Say I take my 25 out 6 Ackley out deer hunting and oh crap, I forgot my ammunition. What am I going to do? I don't have my reload and stuff. I don't have the brass. I don't have anything. I can go to the store, buy a box of 25 out 6. It'll still shoot out of my Ackley just fine. I'll just fire form the brass to the chamber. Just got to recite it in for the new rounds. Hey, you're still kicking, but you have this super performer that you can get more case, case capacity, more velocity. You can get Flatter shooting, excellent. Don't be afraid to actually something out. If you want something custom and you say, hey, all I got is this uh, 243 heavy barrel varmint that I want, and I want something a little bit more performance, take it to a gunsmith. It's literally as simple as running your Ackley reamer through it, setting the headspace to the new Ackley chamber. Make sure you're not excessively headspaced. Shoot 243 out of it. Collect all your uh, brass up, reload it for the Ackley, and 
you got a, you got another performer there. You're going to be shooting up with you know maybe 100 to 150, maybe even 200 feet a second, depending on who what you're ackley in, and, and you'll get much better performance out of it. Don't be afraid of the ackley. So those were my top forgotten cartridges. Okay, so I told you guys I'd come back to 6.5 Creedmoor. Overrated. 6.45 Creedmoor is overrated. It blows me away that all the way since 1891, when the 6.5 by 55 Swedish Mauser was invented, they were hitting targets long range. If you look up history of the Swedish military, long range marksmen, huge long range marksmen, and history tallies that up to the 6.5 bullets. Look at us now. We all love 6.5, whether it be 6.5 aught 6, 6, 260, 6.5 Creedmoor. If I had a man bun, I'd probably own one too. But 6.5 Creedmoor. Excellent. Okay. It, 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 it is definitely taken out, off. It's crazy. It blows me away. 2007, uh, Hornady created it based off the 30TC. Okay. The 30TC was a modified version of a 6.5 Carcano. Okay. So go with my thinking on this. 6.5 Carcano. Anybody remember what that was famous for? Lee Harvey Oswald shot J JFK with a 6.5 Carcano he ordered from a magazine, okay, in Texas. Lee Harvey Oswald was a communist sympathizer. 6.5 Carcano modifies, you know, modified 6.5 Creedmoor, you know, modify it to a 6.5 Creedmoor. My book, if you like 6.5 Creedmoor, you're a communist. <laughs> you know, it, it, it blows me away. Not really, guys. I mean, if you like 6.5, whatever. But... We've had the technology around. There's so many more performers. I'm so surprised it, it, it's gone such crazy. The 260 that came out 10 years before, 260 came out, and 260 Rim, I think, came out in 1997. Hornady came out with the 6.5 Creedmoor in 2007. Within that 10 years, you had the 260. You had the 260. Why do we need the 6.5 Creedmoor that has less velocity, less case capacity, the same length neck to neck neck as the 260 Remington? And before the 260 Remington, we had the 6.5 Swede. Again, more case capacity. Okay, I can see. Yeah, you need an intermediate action for the 6.5 by 55. So let's make a smaller action to make it on this compact gun that weighs 150 pounds that you're going to sit on a bench anyway. But I want it in a short action. But you guys. It's been done. It's been redone, overdone. 264 Win Mag's a better performer than the 6.5 Creedmoor. The 260, the 6.5 by 55, 6.5 aught 6A square. Still much better performer than 6.5 Creedmoor. I cannot believe it. It's just blown up with how it is. Okay. And then um, the other one that I think is, I can see the reason why we have it, but it's still overrated my book is the 308 winchester i have 308 winchester i know a lot of people that hunt with 308 winchester i don't hunt with 308 i if i was going to shoot a light recoiling lighter recoiling i guess than a magnum 30 caliber it'd be a 30 out six so the 308 winchester it was developed 1952 and it was developed by the military as an experimental cartridge based uh based on uh Frankfurt Arsenal's design, okay? Uh, modified 300 Savage, and it's... What it was was to replace the 30-06, you get almost identical performance, 100 feet per second or so less, almost identical performance to 30-06, but it's a little bit lighter. The guns are a little... The actions on the gun are a little bit smaller, so you can cut weight, you can still get performance, you can still do everything you needed to do with that heavy out 6 in the 308 platform okay i can see yes for a military purpose i can see why they wanted to do that because if you can carry 10 extra rounds in a pack for the same amount of weight or whatever great i understand that but it hit the hit the it still hits the long range community by storm you know entry level my my first long range rifle i built was a 308 so i understand that it's a proven performer that it works but it's still it's overrated you know it, it it's overrated to me in the fact that 150 grain 308 is going to push it out at 2800 feet a second 30 out 6 2910 so you're a little over 100 feet per second difference 175 grain 2645 going out there pretty dang slow so i mean even shooting long range with my 25 out 6 i need about 27 minutes of angle to hit a thousand yard target with my 308 
I need 32. I mean, it is, it's, it, it, it goes in like a dang McDonald's arch. It comes in and comes back down. I understand it's a proven performer. A lot of people win matches with it. A lot of people have been, you know, on the other end of that sniper rifle in the military and everything based on that 308 Winchester. But still, you guys, for, for if you're looking at a performance-based system, when you're looking at numbers, if you're looking at a piece of paper, it's overrated. Uh, it, it, a lot of people say, hey, I, I want to get into shooting accurately, but all I got this 30 out 6 I want to get something like a 308. T to me, I, I say, why? A 30 out 6 is going to be fine. Can your gun shoot less than an inch group? Yeah, it shoots about an inch or three quarters of an inch group just fine. Okay, put a good scope on it and start practicing. You're getting more performance. You're getting more velocity, which increases your ballistic coefficients and this, that, and the other. Ballistic coefficients, not just the number they give you inside the box, is based on determining factors of velocities and everything else. G1, G7, this, that, and the other. So... Those are those are my two most overrated cartridges, and the next one I don't like is short mags, Winchester short mags, Ruger compact magnums. Again, I can see that maybe you're going packing in four or five miles, and you want something that has magnum performance to shoot that moose or whatever like that, and you you want to still save as much weight as you can. You know, the, the people like that are buying the titanium rifles. They're sleeping in hammocks and i mean it, it's it, it's I, it has a purpose i, I understand you know th those came out 2003 2004 somewhere in there based on the lazaroni wildcats and, and they were essentially just short mag cartridges in, in most anything that you can think of 27 caliber to you know or, or even 22 caliber up to 338 caliber you know um i've had short mags before the cost of ammunition is why i ended up getting rid of it even reloading it trying to find the brass is a pain in the butt and when you do find the brass somebody has it and they want it you know a dollar a shot for just empty brass so i ended up getting rid of that and i shoot seven mag now if i want to go elk hunting or my 300 uh, 308 norma and i can find that brass anywhere everywhere pawn shops mom and pop shops in a bucket somewhere i can find i can sweep them up off the range they're not as coveted as your short mag brass i'm not saying again i i I understand the value of the smaller action, lighter gun, but I just don't, I, I don't get it. And it's for, for that to be as popular as it is, I'm, when out of the 100% of the hunters, probably only 10% really pack in that far every year. I, I think it's all caught up in the hype when it talks about performance. So if you guys want to argue, if you guys want to... Tell me what you think, something I left out, point you want to argue with me, anything like that. Put it in the comments, send me a message, uh, like and share the video, please. And then, uh, yeah, let me know. If you guys want me to do something else, let me know.